to this teaching that I'm going to give tonight. Listen to me. There's no way you can do what I'm going to be teaching the next couple of weeks. Unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you can do it. I am telling you right now. You have to have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. To do wives, to do what the Lord has told y'all to do. Husbands, to do the things the Lord has told us to do. If you're not a born again Christian, you can't do these things. In Acts 1.8, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So the, he says right here, the, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that's to be witnesses. What's witnesses? Witnesses is not just telling people about the Lord. Witnesses is the, you're being a witness by the way you live. The kind of wife you are to your husband, the kind of husband you are to your wife, the kind of employee you are to your employer, all this is being a witness for the Lord. Witnessing doesn't just mean telling people with your mouth about the Lord. Witnessing is you living in the light and people looking at you. So being a witness is not just this. We're all witnesses, but we have the power right here. I gave you these verses to look at so you can go home and say, Hey, right here the Lord says, But you shall, he said, you will receive power. So you got to believe this. You got to believe that greater is he that is in you, the Holy Spirit, than he that is in the world. That's what the Bible says. If you don't think the Lord has that much power, then you're already defeated. So I'm, these verses I want to show you. I want to give you these verses before we start on marriage. You will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. When does the Holy Ghost come upon you? When you get born again. When you give your life to the Lord. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. That's the, speaking about the Holy Spirit. But tarry ye the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Remember this because I say it over and over because I see a lot of born again Christians who walk in defeat. When they got the power of God in them, but they walk in defeat because they don't use the power. Right here, I'm giving you the scripture to show you. You will receive power. He will endure you with power. We got to believe that. You got to believe that. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. What's he saying here? When you're weak, his strength is perfect. That means you need to turn to him. If you feel weak, you need to turn to him. That's what he's saying right here. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Whatever he says, not, not just marriage, but any of these commandments that he has in here, we have the power to do them. There is, there is no reason we can't do this. These words in here, they're eternal truths. These truths are forever. They're forever. They're eternal truths right here. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. All scriptures. He just, did he say some of these? He said all scriptures, right? So that means this whole Bible is truth. This whole Bible is written by God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. So this is the scriptures. That this is the word of God. There's no mistakes in this Bible. There's no mistakes. There's men out there that are going around saying there's mistakes in here. Well, you have a choice. Believe man or believe the scriptures. Right here, the scripture says all scripture is given by God. Are we going to believe that? I got to get all this down before I start marriage. Do we believe that this is the inspired word of God? That this is the perfect word of God? Hebrews 13.8 Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That's what I'm saying. These are eternal truths. These, what it says in here is for yesterday, it's for today, and it's for tomorrow. So everything we read in here is for today. Again, you have men, well, some things, some of the scriptures that they don't like, they'll say, well, that was just for back then. Right here it says the scriptures 
or for, to, for yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? We believe that? Now, when you don't believe something, tell me. Stop me. Don't be embarrassed if that's what you believe. Every, everything in this Bible, every word in here is for us today. Every word. There's not one wasted word in this book. Not one. The Bible has no errors, has no mistakes, and it is all of it is for today. Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be in agreement? So what the Lord is saying, How can you walk with me if you don't believe what I'm saying? That's what the Lord is saying there. How can you walk with me if you don't believe this? The Bible. How can we walk together unless we're in agreement? Can a Christian walk with the Lord when he doesn't agree with certain commandments? If he's saying, well, I don't agree with that. How, is he, how can you walk with the Lord? You got it. When you give your life to the Lord, this Bible right here, you have said when you gave your life to the Lord, I am going to believe everything in here. This is the Word of God. Also in Isaiah 55, 8, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. The Lord is plainly saying, hey, what you think is not the way I think. The way you think it ought to be, that's not the way I think it ought to be. Remember, we have little fleshly minds, little bitty fleshly minds in our head. God is the master of knowing everything. He knows everything. He knows what's better for us than we do. We might think, well, I think this way is better for me. No, right here it says, no. -uh. He says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. And whose thoughts are better, his or ours? Whose ways are better, his or ours? You understand? You all see where I'm getting at? If we're going to believe this, we got to remember, okay, even though I don't understand it, even though I wouldn't do it that way, but that's what God said. Okay, is, is that the way we're going to live our lives? Is that the way we're going to live them? Christian women today and men, Christians, men and women, husband and wives, have a hard time, have a hard time doing what God says to do. Why? Because they're letting the flesh get in the way. Because they're letting their thoughts, they think their thoughts is better than the Lord's. Plus they find it hard to do. Well, what did I say at the very beginning? It is not hard to do. You got the power. Everybody in here agreed that they have the power of the Holy Spirit. So there's no, the scriptures that we're going to be reading, do not, do not, do not say, I can't do that. Because you can. I've given you the scriptures to show you that the Lord has given you the power to follow His instructions. A lot of times, especially men, we get something that's supposed to be put together. Especially men, what do we do? We don't look at the uh, instructions. <laughs> oh, I, I don't need that. I can put this together. Well, guess what? We can't. Especially marriage. We need the instructions from the Lord. We need to read these instructions. Because if we don't read these, these instructions, we're going to mess it up. So when y'all go home tonight, for the husbands who are not here, tell them I said that. Tell them they're going to have to get the tape of tonight because they need, they need to hear this. This is not for just for women or wives. This is for, for, for both. We're going to learn that God's ways, like God's ways is, is superior than, our, than, than ours. Y'all believe that, right? Are we smarter than the Lord? No way. We don't even come close. We're not even a dot on His knowledge. But we got to put that, we got to put that right here in our hearts and know, yes, God's ways, His thoughts are much superior than mine. Who created marriage? The Lord created. Did Adam and leave? Did they have a blood test? Go get a marriage license? No. Did the Lord tell them they had to go get a blood test? Where's that comes from? That comes from man. Amen. That comes from man. Adam and Eve did not have to go get a blood test. The government, the government doesn't tell you you're married in God's eyes. Because we're going to learn in God's eyes when are you married. All right, We're going to learn that. So forget all this worldly stuff out here about getting a license and all that. For the, for the world to make it legal, yeah, you got to do that. Just like a lot of things, we have to follow the law, obey the laws. So we got to go do the blood work. we got to go do those things. But this is not God's way. That's, the, that's man's way. Marriage was here before the government was here. 
Marriage was here before government. We want to know what God says, right? So that's what we're going to learn. I'm going to go to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. It says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That cleave means join. So a man is to leave his mother and father and cleave, join his wife. And they shall be one flesh. One flesh. Did it say one spirit? We're not talking about spirit here. We're talking about one flesh. We're going to learn what that one flesh means. Remember, it doesn't say we're going to be one spirit, which we do. We will become one spirit, but that's not what it's saying right here. It says, and they shall be one flesh. Now, before I get started, blood covenant. Let me say something about blood covenant. There's a blood covenant between man and God. That's Jesus, right? Jesus had to shed his blood for us so we could become one with God. You understand that? Jesus had to shed his blood. And then in the Bible, it also shows that for a man and man to have a blood covenant to each other, they become brothers, blood brothers. There is such a thing as blood brothers but in the spirit and it, it tells you in the bible how those two men become blood brothers it's like it's, it talks about like i take greg and i talk, i trust him totally i've been knowing him all my life and i trust him totally with everything and i want to go into blood covenant with him well we do it together just like i trust him with everything he trusts me with everything we become blood, but we, I mean, it talks about cutting and it's, there's blood in it. That's, that's a whole nother teaching. But there's a blood covenant between us and God. There's a blood covenant between man and man. There's also a blood covenant between man and woman. Now, the blood covenant between a man and a woman, this is why a woman, on her first time, she bleeds. It's called a hymen in there. The doctors have already said they don't know why that's in there. They don't, even, they don't know why it's in there. It's just there. They don't know why. Well, I do know why, because the Lord's told me. That's the blood covenant between a man and a woman. Just like we're in blood covenant with the Lord, and we're one with Him, now we're one with our spouse. Now, a lot of times, many times, we don't know that. Even Christians don't know that. And they don't teach that in church. But I can teach you that in the Bible. It's in the Bible. And so women, a lot of times, they don't know what they're, you know, what they're actually doing in God's eyes. But you've got a blood covenant with the first man. A blood covenant. Not just a marriage, a blood covenant. But, remember this. God does not hold you accountable for sins that you, don't, that you honestly don't know about. Remember that. Now when He does enlighten your eyes, when He does open your eyes, now you are accountable for what you do. But there's a lot of women out there that don't know this. And like I said before, they don't teach it in Sunday school and they don't teach it in church. But I, I do teach it because it's the Word of God. That is why a woman bleeds on the first time. Only the first time. Only the first time. Because it's only one time that you become one with the Lord. He died on the cross once, right? He didn't keep dying on the cross over and over, giving His blood. He gave his blood one time. Now, that's, that's, that's a teaching I might do later, you know, on blood covenant, the blood covenant between us and God, between man and man, and between man and woman. But for right now, I just want to point that out since we're going to be talking about marriage. Genesis 4.1 And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. Can you make babies? Can I, can I make a baby with Jody just by knowing her? So the word knew here does not mean I know that Adam knows Eve. No, knew here means he had intercourse with her and she conceived. All right, you understand? Because I'm going to be reading verses like this. And he knew her. But bottom line, when you have intercourse with a man, that, that's when you're married. Exodus 22:16, And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, now right here is talking about a young lady, a young lady who's not engaged or has a man, and lie with her, 
talking about he talks her into lying with him. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He's saying, and he will marry her. If he gives her this talk like men do, men know what to say to women to get them to bed. But right here I'm just showing you, if this man, you know, going to bed with him, then he says he will marry her because, they, because he had sex with her. So I'll just use these verses to show you marriage begins at sex. So, she becomes your wife when you have sex. So it's sex and marriage? Well, that's, that is marriage. No, sex is marriage. Sex is marriage. I'm going to be t- I'm, I've got more to say on that. I'm, this is just the beginning. In those times, they would have a wedding party. Not a ceremony where, where you had priests. The priests, they didn't have priests that married back then. While the party was going on, everybody was partying. They would go into the room. Yeah, they just got a blessing after And they did their thing. And when they came out, they were husband and wife. Yeah. This is the way it was. That's the way Indians did it a lot, too. And I don't know who else does it, but I know that's the way they did it here. And that's, that's what made marriage back then. I'm telling you, when does marriage start? In God's eyes. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not... That, ye, that he which is joined to a harlot, meaning prostitute, is one body. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. So what did I read at the very beginning? When he said that we'll be one flesh? Well, this is what he's talking about. When you have sex, right here he's talking about a, a, a harlot. So that's how, how you become one flesh. Back in Genesis, the verse I just gave you earlier. Back in Genesis where it says we would be one flesh. And I tell you that doesn't mean in the spirit. One flesh is having sex. So harlot is prostitute? Yeah. Harlot means prostitute here. So men who go out there and have sex with whores. Right here it says they become one. In flesh. Well the world. They don't know nothing about the word of God. Okay. Now we as Christians. Now we know. We know what they're doing. And we know what not to do. The world, they don't have the slightest idea of what, what, what God's laws are. They don't want them, and they don't want to hear it. Matthew 1.25. This is about, talking about Joseph and Mary. And knew her not, knew. Remember what the word knew meant? Means? And knew her not till she had brought forth the firstborn son and called his name Jesus. So what he's saying right here, Joseph did not have sex with Mary. Until she had her firstborn son and called him Jesus. All right. I was about to say, how did, how did kid, how did, I was like, okay, yeah, Mary. Yeah. That's why, that's why uh, Jesus was perfect. He had God, the Holy Spirit, plant the seed in the woman. The seed is what makes the baby. Without the seed, a woman can't have a baby. So Jesus was born of a, a human woman. But the seed came from God. So that's why Jesus is perfect. Now, if, if the seed would have came from a man, which were all sinners, then Jesus would have been a sinner. But because the seed came from the Holy Spirit, from the Lord, that's why Jesus was perfect and without sin. Because the seed was planted by God. Psalms 128.3 Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy house, Thy children <clears throat> like olive plants around about thy table. So what he's saying right here, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. What's on the vine? Grapes. A fruitful vine. So what does that mean? That the woman is going to produce. The women is going to produce. Some of us in here are already fruitful vines. Some of us aren't. But some of us are. But this is, this is what I'm showing you. The wife shall be a fruitful vine. So the wife is going to have babies. Genesis 1, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So God had to tell them, Adam and Eve. And we're, going to, we're going to see in a minute about that. But God spoke to both of them right here. He said, And God blessed them. So he blessed the man with a seed, and he blessed the woman to have what it takes to take that seed. So they could, so, so they could be fruitful and multiply. 
Malachi 2, verse 13 through 16. This is for the men. Maybe I ought to wait and read this next week, but this is for the men. You co- I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible because it's a lot easier to understand if, if I read it out of the King James. You cover the altar with your tears because the Lord doesn't pay attention to your offerings anymore and you receive no blessings from Him. Why has God abandoned us? Abandoned us? You cry. I tell you why. It is because the Lord has seen your treachery in divorcing your wives who have been faithful to you through through the tears, the compassion you promised to care for and deep. You were united to your wife by the Lord and God's wise plan when you married, the two of you became one person in His sight. And what does He want? This is what God wants out of a marriage. Godly children from your, from your union. Therefore, guard your passion. Keep faith with the wife of your youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says He hates divorce and cruel men. Therefore, control your passions that there be no divorcing of your wives. Like I said, this is for the husband. The other nights... The other night, uh, we were talking about prayer and what hinders prayer. Well, I talked about if the wife, if the husband does not honor his wife as being the weaker vessel, we're going to get to that verse later. But if the man does not honor his wife as being the weaker vessel, his prayers are not answered. Okay, that's one thing. That's one thing it says here also. But also it talks about men being unfaithful. It talks about wife being faithful and the man being unfaithful. And it's probably because there's a lot more men being unfaithful than there are women. I'm not saying women are not unfaithful. They are. But men, we do it more than women do. And that's just a known fact. But he says, the two, what the Lord, what's, what's he want from the two? He wants us to produce children. So what I've been reading you is we're supposed to have children. If you're guilty of doing this, of maybe being unfaithful to your wife or you're not honoring her, guess what? All we need to do, as I always say this, if, this if, if I mention anything, any of these things in here, if I mention them to you and you're guilty of it, all you got to do is ask the Lord to forgive you. From here. From the heart. I've always said from the heart. Okay? Because the Lord will, if you're praying from the Lord and from the heart, On whatever it sin it may be, the Lord will forgive. Remember that the Lord wants to forgive you. But you got to have the heart, the heart to ask for forgiveness. And He will forgive. Now, Genesis 2.16. Now listen, women, this is kind of on your part. And the Lord God commanded the man. Now a while ago, I, I showed you where God talked. He said to them, He talked to them, to the to Adam and Eve. Remember a while ago, the verse, he, he told them to multiply. But right here, that's why people miss a lot of times. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of the tree, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest, they made us freely eat. He told the man, he taught the man this. He told the man, this is what, is what. Adam's job was to teach Eve. And like I've, I've said always, it is our responsibility to make sure our wife and our children know the Lord. We need to know this. When Right here is showing you. God didn't say He commanded Adam and Eve. Or He didn't say, and I command them. He said, I commanded the man. He told the man, this is what you do or you don't do. Because the man is the head of the house. Did I say the boss of the house? Big difference between boss and head. Big difference. In 1 Peter 3, 7, which is the verse I was talking about a while ago. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, meaning understanding, giving honor to the wife, meaning respect the wife, as, a, as the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Remember that God's grace is equal. Remember this. That your prayers be not hindered. So men, well, like I said a while ago, if you want your prayers to be answered, honor your wife. What it says right here. 
<coughs> excuse me. And the reason, like I said before, the reason he called the women the weaker vessel, and I've said it before, it's not because y'all are less spiritual, because I've seen a lot of women that are more spiritual than men. Doesn't mean physically either. Because believe it or not, I've seen women who are stronger than men, physically. This is the reason I say it means they're the weaker vessels because Eve was the one who was was uh, tricked. Not Adam. We're going to see that. hate to use the word, but y'all are just a little more gullible than men. Okay, I don't know how else to put it. But Eve is the one that listened to, to the devil and it wasn't Adam. Oh boy, well, I'm going to show you why. Because she listened to the devil instead of her husband. <clears throat> that was wrong. Anytime you listen to, well, Galatians 1 8, it says, But though we, no, we here is men. I'm just using this verse. We means men. Or an angel from heaven. Angel here means the fallen angels. Y'all with me? It's talking about men and fallen angels, demons. But though we are, are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we, we have preached unto you, let him be cursed. So the Lord's saying, he plainly says, anybody who comes to you, whether it be a man or a demon, pre preaching another gospel, they will be cursed. The devil was preaching another gospel. Adam taught Eve, do not eat of this fruit, because that's what God taught Adam. But Eve listened to the devil, and the devil said, oh, then nothing's going to happen. It's okay if you eat of that fruit. And she listened to the devil. Are y'all with me? She listened to the devil. Eve did. And this is why the Lord has called the woman the weaker vessel. Adam was not there. It was Eve. Genesis 3.16 Unto the woman he said, Now this is, he gave, he, he cursed the devil for doing it. He cursed the woman for listening. And he also cursed Adam. Because who's the head? Adam. See, men, our responsibilities are very, very important. Very important. It is our responsibility that our, our wife and our children know what's right and wrong. But because Eve did it, Adam still got punished. Adam didn't, Adam, the devil didn't fool Adam, but Adam got punished also. He was the head. The Bible plainly says, shows, that if the man is the head and whatever the wife is does, he's, God's going to hold the man for it. Just like... Y'all are held accountable for teaching us. Right. And, and which I'm gonna show, I can show you other places in the Bible where God went to the man. It was the woman's fault. It was the woman who did something wrong, but God went to the man. There's other places in the Bible just like this. I remember in the Bible, after, after Eve bit into the apple, he... Yeah, Eve, Eve, she gave the apple to Adam, or the fruit. It's not an apple, but it's a fruit. <clears throat> but Adam didn't take the fruit because he was listening to the devil. Eve listened to the devil, and then after the devil had her do what she did, she turns around and she offers her husband, Adam, the fruit. And he, and he ate of it also. But Adam got in trouble because he's the head. That's very important for men to know. If my wife does something that's wrong, God's going to hold me accountable. She's under my leadership as being the head of the house. Now, Genesis 3.16. This, this is where it starts getting a little rough. On to the woman. Because of the sin she committed. He said, Genesis 3.16. On to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and in thy conception. And sorrow shalt thou shalt bring forth children. So one of the things is you're gonna have pain when you bring when you bring children in the world. Kenzie, you blame Eve for the pain you get. For the labor you go through, you blame Eve. I mean it's right here. Eve, because you listen to the devil, because of that, now you're gonna have pain when you bear children. But also, let's read the the rest of the verse. It says, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Your desire is going to be to your husband, and he shall rule over thee. What does it mean by, and thy desire? Well, she's going to have children. 
She doesn't have children. Uh -huh. But her husband is still number one. Okay. Husband is number one, then children. Pretty much, I mean, it says, it, it, started, it talks about children, but then it says, and thy desire shall be to their husband. Mm -hmm. Meaning, your husband will still be put first. Yes. And he shall rule over thee. And that's a part that a lot of women can't take. But there's a lot of verses here that women cannot take. And he... You, how would it go, like, for the, for the husband... Now, don't get too far ahead, because I, I got an answer for everything you're going to... I got an answer for everything you're going to ask, okay? Uh, Y'all should know by now, wait till I'm through, because by the time I finish, I'll answer your question. Okay. We understand that 3.16 says, and he shall rule over thee. But we understand why, though. That's why I gave you these verses up here. Do you understand why now God made man the head? Because of Eve. She was the weaker vessel. She is the one that listened to the devil, not Adam. Because in God's grace, in His love and His grace, we're all equal. We know that, right? God does not love men more than women. His grace is not more for men than women. So in God's love and, in, and grace, we're all equal. But He does have a chain of command, and we'll, we'll see the chain of command also. I'll get to that. But I want you all to understand why He is making the man the head of the house. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man... Okay, this is the chain of command right here. God's chain of command. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So Christ is our head. And the head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. So that's God's chain of command right there. God, Christ, man, woman. That's his chain of command. You go into the military, you break that chain of command and see what happens. It's not good. Well, the Lord has a spiritual chain of command. And this is it right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. He plainly says it. God is over Christ, Christ is over man, and man is over woman. Head means we're supposed to teach them spiritually. We're supposed to provide for them. Adam, his, his punishment was he has to work for a living. God says, you will have to till the ground now. But before, before this happened, God, I mean, Adam, all he had to do was speak things and things happened. Just like Jesus. Because Adam was perfect. He wasn't, he wasn't Jesus, son of God, but God had made him perfect. God made Adam perfect. But because he sinned, now, he said, now... Where before, you, all you had to do was speak it, have dominion. He said, you got dominion over the earth. But now he's telling them, now you're going to have to work for a living. He said, now you have to till the ground. Meaning, men, you have to work for a living. And that's what was our punishment was. That now we have to work. But the head of the house, the head of the house means you provide for your wife, you provide for your children, and you lead them in the way of the Lord. Period. That is your responsibility. And believe me, when you're a born-again Christian, the Lord will hold your husband for that. Believe me, He will. If, you're, if you have a husband that's not following the Lord, if you have a husband that's not obeying God, I would pray, very seriously pray for him. Because the Lord's going to hold him accountable. Pray for your husband. If you have a husband that's that way. Now, if your husband, if he, is, if he does obey God and he takes the head of the house as God says to put it, then you're in good hands. Then it would be easy, which I'll get on this later, but then it would be easy for the husband to rule over you because he's taking care of you. You know, why you want to bite the hand that's feeding you? Right? If he's taking care of you the way he should, then you shouldn't have no problem submitting to him, right? So men, it's very important for us to be the men God said to be. When he said head, what does Christ do for us? He supplies us all our needs. Well, we got to supply our wives their needs. Their needs. And how much does Christ love us? He gave his life. He gave his life for us. Well, husband, we, we're, we're to give our lives for our wives. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9. 
Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Women have hard times with this. The man wasn't created. We weren't made for y'all, but y'all were made for us. God saw Adam was by himself, and he says, I'm going I'm to make him a help meet. In the Bible, it says meet, M-E-E-T. You got translations that have taken the word meet and, and put mate. Mate just means a partner. That's all that means. You have a partner. Meet. God says I will make him a help meet. Meaning I will make him a woman that's going to meet his needs. And God says anybody who adds or takes away from this. Woe unto them. So these translations. Be careful on the translations. It does not say mate. You're, we are not mates. We're husband and wives. Okay, and right here it says God made the woman for the man. That's why I'm saying that's why I got started the way I did. Are we going to believe everything in here? Christian women know they need their husbands. And, but let me tell you this. I know I need my wife. I'm the head of this house. And my wife knows that. She'll, if she was in here, she'd say yes. I am the head. No doubt. But I can tell you in front of her, I need her. I need her also. I don't, I don't go around with, you know, like, you need me. I don't need you. No, I need my wife. And a man of God will tell you the same thing. We need our wives. The Lord has put you here to help us. To really, to, I mean, really. I need my wife and, and there's times I'm glad she's here. Okay, I'm glad she's with me. So it's not like we don't need y'all. Or we do need y'all. And not just to meet our needs, if you understand what I'm saying. Not just for that. So if there's any men out there who think, oh, I don't need women. No. Well, you're not a man of God. Because men of God need their wives. God put you here for us. So we need you. If we didn't need you, God wouldn't have made y'all. But we do need y'all. We need our wives. And a lot of times, <laughs> I see it. A lot of times, the wife is the backbone of the family. It shouldn't be that way, but I see that a lot, where the woman is more of the backbone than the man is. In the Christian walk, it shouldn't be that way. The man is the head. He should be the backbone. But we're learning here tonight, our wives should lean on us. Okay? Just like we, we lean on them, not the way they lean on us, but we lean on them also. We're going to read several places where it talks about submission. Submission in the Bible, really women, submission in the Bible is a beautiful word. It really is. If you look at it right, it's a beautiful word. <clears throat> when we submit to the Lord, when we submit to the Lord, how blessed are we? Doesn't the Lord bless us tremendously when we submit to Him? Same thing. Same thing. In a, in a, in a Christian marriage, Women, you submit to your husband, it's going to be a good thing. If it's a Christian man and he's doing what God says to do. All right? Now, if you got married, if you became a Christian after you got married and you have a man that's not godly, pray for him. You need to pray for him. Pray that the Lord will, will save your husband. And it says, if you have a husband or a wife, either way, if the husband or the wife, the Bible says, if one of them is not a believer, then to keep living your Christian walk. Because by the way you live, that, that may reach the lost spouse, whether husband or wife. So husband, if you married a wife who wasn't a Christian, or a wife, if you married a husband who wasn't a Christian, it says, he didn't say to leave them. He didn't say to leave, to leave him. He says to keep on living your Christian walk and your spouse, whichever it may be, may, may be saved by the way you live. God will give you the power to live with that spouse, man or woman. You just got to use it. If you don't use it, then you're going to be very depressed, upset, and unhappy. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 24. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's a big one right there. Wives, now listen to me. Now listen to the word. Forget that I'm a man. 
Forget that I'm a man, okay? Try. Try to hear what God is saying. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm counseling with a marriage couple and I see the wife is not submitting to the husband, already I know she's not submitting to the Lord either. Because there's no way you can not submit to your husband and submit to the Lord. Because the Lord is saying, submit to your husband, but you're not doing it. So if you're not doing what He's saying to do, then you're not submitting to the Lord either. It says to submit to your husband as unto the Lord. You need to follow Him. Just like man follows the Lord, I have to follow Jesus. If I don't follow Jesus, I'm going to mess up. If I'm not following the Lord, if I'm going on Jesse's way, guess where I'm going? Down. So just as I submit myself to the Lord, whatever God tells me to do, I do it. Well, that's the way your women, you submit to your husband. Just like, just like you listen to the Lord, you listen to your husband. Because if you're not listening to your husband, God said, God said. That's why I'm saying, forget that I'm a man up here speaking. God said, women, if you don't submit to your husbands, you're not submitting to me either. These are strong things for the women, but believe me, men, our responsibilities are much, much, much higher, much stronger in the Lord than submitting. What y'all have to do, what women have to do is submit to us, that is really very minor compared to what God holds us responsible for. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Unless he asks you to do something that's not in here. That's against, that's, kind of what I'm saying. that's against God's will. Okay. okay. If he says, let's go get drunk. Okay. If he says anything, if he's wanting you to do something that's against God, which I was going to get on that later, but you don't, you're not going to wait. So I guess I'll go ahead and start now. There's submission. You could, you could submit without being obedient. Because if your husband says, okay. we don't have no money. I need you to go stand on the corner. Well, what you say to your husband? Now, this is this is submitting, but not obeying. What you do is say, "Babe, honey, whatever you call him, I love you. You know I love you, but this is against my God, and I can't do it." You're not obeying him, but you're submitting. Now, if you go and say, "Well, you no good," blah blah blah, blank blank blank, but then you're not submitting nor obeying. So there's a way, women. If your husband's asking you to do something that's not of God, there's a way you could be, still be submissive to him and not obey him. Now, husbands, now usually, I, I usually say this at the very beginning. Husbands, don't listen to what your, the wife role is and make sure she does her part. When I get to the husband part, husbands, listen. Same thing with the wives. Wives, when I talk about husbands, you can turn off your ears because it's not for you. It's for your husband. Because a lot of times, we like to point the finger. Either way, husband or wife, you like to point the finger and say, Hey, God said, well, no, we don't do that. This teaching is not so you can point fingers at each other. Well, you're supposed to do this, or you're supposed to do that. No, because that's not Christian. We're not being Christian at all. When I say things about the husband, husband, you listen. When I say things about the wife, wives, you listen. But for sure, whatever you do, don't go home and start pointing your finger to whoever, the spouse, and say, well, you're supposed to. No, that's not what God said to do. Wives, I can always tell a wife if she's submissive to the Lord by the way she's submissive to her husband. That's all I have to do. That's all. If I counsel married couples, the first one I'm going to go to, I'm not even going to talk to the wife. I go straight to the man because that's where the head is. If there's trouble in the family, I'm going to the head of the house. And if when he talks to me and I see it's from him, I'm appointed. Well, this, this, the Bible says you, blah, blah, blah. Okay? But I'm going to the man first. I'm not even going to talk to the wife. Because it's the man's responsibility, just like Jody and I. If we get in an argument, it is my responsibility to make things right. It is mine. Whether I'm right or wrong, I go to Jody and I tell her I'm sorry or I apologize. Whether right or wrong, if our marriage is not right, if we're fighting, then it is my responsibility, the man's responsibility, to make it right. Not the woman. I wish y'all's husbands were here. 
but it's the man's responsibility to make things right in his house, not the wife. The best thing for you can do for your husband is pray for him. That's the best thing you can do for him. But if you're going to try to correct them yourself, you're going to make things worse. Okay? Do not think you can change your husband. You cannot change your husband. The Lord can change your husband. That's why I say pray for your husband. Verse 23. <clears throat> for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Just like God is over the church, that's the way the husband is over, the, over his family, his wife. Now, if you have a church that's a true church of God, they're going to they're gonna obey God. They're going to submit to the Lord, right? Well, that's the way wives are, to, are supposed to be to their husbands. The Lord takes care of the church. Well, husbands, we take care of our wives. Verse 24, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be there to their own husbands in everything. Now, everything. Remember, remember what we talked about a while ago? Everything that is here in the Word, in the Bible. Like I said, if, he's, if he wants you to do something that's wrong, that's not of God, that, that's not what he's talking about. Everything. Well, my husband told me to go sell my body. Well, no. Well, it says right here, I, I have to obey him in everything. No. No. When you read the Bible completely, you'll see that that's not right. When he says everything here, he's talking about everything that is right. Now, we're talking about a Christian husband. So if you have a Christian husband, he's not going to ask you to do these things. In verse 23, it didn't say that the woman is the savior of her own body. It said the husband is. The Lord, women, the Lord has... If you can read this from Genesis to Revelations... You can read this Bible from Genesis to Revelations and you will find that God always had a man over the woman. There is no such thing as women being independent. That's why it says when your husband, when you're married, your father gives you to your husband. You go from your, the male authority of your father to the male authority of your husband. And on the book of Ruth, when we studied the book of Ruth, what did I show? When the husband dies, if the husband dies, the book of Ruth teaches this. If the husband dies, she either goes back to her father or to the brother of the husband. But she goes to the, me to the next male kin. That's all through the Bible. So, and that's God's way. God does ne has never meant for women to take care of themselves. Never. It's nowhere in here. So right here it says that he is the savior of the body. We are to take care of you always. There's no such thing as women's independence. Not biblically. Not biblically. My daughter, not this one, but my other daughter who is a Christian, I've told her, I said, your responsibility is to find a Christian man and get married. God didn't say for you to go, go to college, get your job, and take care of yourself. Now I'm telling my daughter this. Why? Because that's the way of the Lord. God says, women, find you a Christian man and you let him take care of you. And that's God's way. It's a sin for women, which they do today, having babies without the man. That is a sin. That is not the family to God. The family to God, husband, wife, and babies. Not just mother and babies. So women who are out there having babies without the man, it is against God. It is against God. Listen to me. It's against God. It's, it's a grown thing. It's more and more... It's happening more and more. But alone, Christian women, listen to me. That is not the way of God. If you're not pregnant for whatever reason, if God not, has not allowed you to have a baby for some reason, we don't know what it is, but that's... If you're, if you're free and you're having intercourse with your husband and you're doing what you're supposed to do and you still don't have babies, well, the Lord maybe has something else. Maybe there's a reason. I don't know. I don't know everything. All right? I don't know everything. But women, God, I've already showed you, God wants y'all wants to have babies. Now, there's, there's physical problems with some women, and because of the physical problem, they can't have babies. They're not disobeying God, because it's a physical thing. But for women who say, I don't want babies, I don't want to get pregnant, I don't want to have... No. 
You're going against God. God said, hey, women, multiply. Have babies. And we're going we're gonna to get more on that. There's gonna, I'm going to be a lot more on that. But it's already getting late, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here. But there's no such thing as women being independent. And I hate to say this. Lost women, I can understand it coming from them. But I see it coming from Christian women also. That's why I'm saying at the very beginning of the class, are we going to obey this? Because there's Christians out there who are going to say, well, yeah, but that... When you say, yeah, but... And you find some excuse why not to obey God. You see what I'm saying? When we decided to become Christians, we decided to obey the whole Bible. The Bible. The Word of God. And it sounds like, man... Man, the Lord's really down on women. No. The Lord loves y'all. That's why He put the man over you so you wouldn't have to work for a living. All you got to do is love your husband and love your kids. That's pretty good. I mean, I don't know why women look at that as being hard to do. Especially if you have a, a godly man. If you have a God-fearing husband, man, you're, you're in good shoes. You're in good shoes. There's women who don't have that. But a woman who has a man who fears the Lord, all she has to do is be obedient to her husband. That's it. To listen to him. And if he's a God, if he's a man of God, that's not going to be hard to do. Because he's a man of God. So being submissive to your husband, it's hard to do if you're trying to do it on your own. And it's hard to do if your husband is not Christian. But you can do it. You can. Because you got the power. And we're talking vice versa. If the husband has a wife that is, does not walk with the Lord. So it goes both ways. I'm talking to both.